I wanted to spend some time talking about um, how we can diagnose an ECM, electronic control module. Now this is just a base level um, diagram that I've created, and the strategies here are where you would initially start when you're trying to diagnose a electronic control module. So when I first started out as a tech, I got a truck in that uh, would not start, and the PCM was the uh, suspected failed component. And I was fairly new tech, and uh, I wish I would have had more background and understanding in basic electrical principles in order to appropriately diagnose this ECM. Um, unfortunately, I did not, and I replaced an ECM that probably wasn't bad. And so I want to talk about the first things that we should do when we're testing an electrical uh, circuit uh, leading up to an ECM. So we see here in this diagram um, that I have my ECM, and right now I only have two um, wires that are going to it, a, a battery positive and a ground. Most ECMs would have many wires and possibly multiple grounds and or B positives. But this is, I've, I've stripped all that away to make this uh, as straightforward as possible to hopefully um, help you in uh, diagnosing why an ECM is not uh, not working. All right, I want to do a quick comparison of the two different uh, electrical schematics that we'll be referencing during this. Uh, the one on the left um, has everything is the same except the connector is uh, connected. I have the male terminals um, connected to the female terminals. And the um, diagram on the right, the connector one, has been um, disconnected. So that circuit is open. And uh, that's the circuit that we are going to start with. Uh, but keep in mind, this is the, this, the same problem that we're addressing. I just want it to be clear whether or not the ECM is connected uh, to the battery. We will now perform uh, what's known as an open circuit uh, voltage test. The reason we call it an open circuit voltage test is I have the connector disconnected. This is where I'm checking for powers and grounds. Once I've disconnected the connector, I'm now going to determine whether or not there is an open on either the power side or the ground side of this circuit. The first place to check for voltage is directly at the connector. I can put my red meter lead on the power pin and my black meter lead on the ground pin. I want to make sure to use the appropriate terminal testing tools uh, to ensure that I don't cause any damage to the connector. So in our test here, we can see that we have power and ground. We got 12.6 volts, which indicates that there is not an open in the ground side of the circuit or in the power side of the circuit. We haven't fully um, tested whether or not there's a problem with the power and ground circuit. All we verified with this open circuit voltage test is that there is not an open in the ground or power going to this ECM. If the voltage value was zero in this uh, measurement, then that would indicate that I have an open in either the ground or the power side of the circuit. I would need to independently verify the continuity of the ground side and independently verify the continuity of the power side. We will leave the circuit like this, that we've, we've determined that there is not an open in the power and ground side, and see um, what we do next. We now need to change to a closed circuit voltage test. We'll switch over to the other schematic. Notice now that we have our connector um, connected. This is important in this test in order to determine whether or not there is voltage dropping somewhere else in the circuit. Voltage will not drop in a circuit that is disconnected or that is open. We must have current flowing through the circuit in order to uh, properly test for um, a voltage drop somewhere in the circuit. In order to perform a closed circuit voltage test, we will need to back probe into connector 1. You can use a T-pin to back probe into connector 1, or there are specific back probing tools that you can find for your multimeter. 
We'll slide the back probe tool in the back of the connector and make sure that it makes contact with the metal terminal part of the wire. We need to put one on the pin 1, uh, the B positive, and we need to put one on the ground, pin 2. Next we'll connect the red meter lead to pin 1 at B positive and we'll connect the black meter lead at pin 2, which is the ground pin of connector 1. There are several possibilities for the uh, value that you may get in this uh, when performing this measurement. Here we see a zero voltage. That would indicate that somewhere in the circuit I have the voltage dropping. That could be either on the power side or on the ground side of the circuit. Through an open circuit voltage test, I've already verified that there is not an open, but that I have high resistance um, is what this test is showing me. You may have a value that is something a little more than zero volts. If it was four volts or even six volts, that might, under some circumstances, provide enough power for the um, ECM. However, there are some functions that may not be operating correctly. Anything that is less than 12.6 12 volt, 12 volts probably indicates some type of a voltage drop somewhere else in the circuit. Most manufacturers indicate a voltage drop of about 0.5 volts on the power side and 0.5 volts on the ground side. That's still a little bit excessive, but uh, manufacturers are, are okay with that. You will have some resistance through a standard conductor uh, as well as a fuse. Now once again I've simplified this circuit, there would likely be switches and um, other components that would be possibly um, in line uh, prior to reaching the ECM. The point here is that we are making a determination whether or not the appropriate amount of voltage is available for the ECM um, at the connector with current flowing through the circuit. So what about a value of 12.6? A value of 12.6 says that I have the appropriate amount of voltage available at the connector. Now I've drawn this with wires connecting the connector to the ECM. Most likely the connector is directly on the ECM and the wiring harness plugs directly into it. Under this circumstance, um, you should be able to, if the ECM is not uh, not communicating on the network, you should be able to conclude that under this circumstance the ECM is what needs to be replaced. So let's go back to the scenario that I ran into as a young technician. I did an open circuit voltage test. I was fairly confident that I understood uh, electrical um, diagnosis, at least at that level and I determined that I had 12.6 volts in an open circuit voltage test. I then plugged in the connector into the ECM and I back probed uh, the powers and grounds and my meter read zero volts. I didn't really understand voltage drop and what it really was telling me. I misunderstood the measurement and determined that this must mean that the PCM is uh, you know disconnecting the power somehow I started thinking about is it the connector that's you know when I'm connecting it against the the ECM is that the issue well I replaced that ECM and it was not the problem that's an expensive mistake um, I think the ECM was somewhere around five hundred dollars and my shop ended up having to cover the cost of that so I determined that I needed to come up with a better understanding of how uh, voltage drop affected the circuit. In order to perform a voltage drop uh, test, I need to have current flowing through the circuit. So in this circumstance, how we have this set up, I have current flowing through the circuit. Voltage will drop where the resistance is the highest. Because the voltage is not dropping right here at connector one, that indicates somewhere else in the circuit has high resistance. In order to perform a voltage drop test, you could quickly do this by connecting the black meter lead to the B positive pin 1 and the red meter lead to the positive terminal of the battery. This test would help to determine 
whether or not there is voltage dropping on the positive side of the circuit. Anything more than 0.5 volts would indicate somewhere along the positive circuit I have a problem. I could then individually isolate areas of the positive side. I might go from the connector to the fuse. If there was a switch, I could go from the fuse to the switch, um, and so on, and, and electrically isolate um, each component on the positive side. The placement of the meter leads isn't super critical. Um, if you put them backwards, you'll simply just get a negative um, value on your meter. Uh, the best convention to follow is put the red meter lead the closest to the positive terminal of the battery. If I tested the entire positive side of the circuit um, with that first test and it was below 0.5 volts, I could then drop over to the negative side of the circuit. To perform a voltage drop on the negative side of the circuit, you could place your red meter lead on the ground pin at the PCM and your black meter lead on the negative terminal of the battery. This could quickly help me to understand if I have a voltage drop. Most of the time, the voltage drop occurs on the ground side because we rely on the chassis as the grounding unit um, to get back to the negative terminal of the battery. This can then cause corrosion or any other type of uh, problem that would create high resistance in the circuit. So hopefully this helped to clear up why we test the way that we do. Some techs don't perform voltage drop tests and it really comes down to they just don't understand what they're doing. And I as a young te technician also had that problem and then learned over time and were able, was able to save uh, on repairs, the embarrassment of doing the wrong repair as well as the cost. When I had an opportunity to uh, work with uh, one of the OEMs, they um, did a study on this and determined that somewhere around 70% of the PCMs or ECMs that were sent back under warranty actually had no problems with them. So we're talking a $400 unit that's being replaced when it might just take um, cleaning the corrosion off of a, a ground stud and uh, repairing the PCM in that, uh, in that way. So hopefully this helps.